Hello. Well, thanks for writing me. Now, I understand from your email that you didn't do as well on the test as you'd hoped. Um, as you might imagine, there are a lot of people in that same sort of boat, and that's why I went ahead and created this video, because I wanted to be as fair as possible in talking to people and give exactly the same advice and feedback, rather than doing it one-on-one -on -one and then potentially giving some people some advice that I don't give other people. Well, I hope you don't consider this condescending uh, by sending you to watch this video rather than having a meeting with you in person, but I hope you understand when literally more than 100 people are unhappy with their grade, there's no way, even if I had half-hour meetings, that would be more than a full week's work week just, just to meet with the, the people who felt that way. So I'm, I apologize for doing this, but I hope that you find it helpful and you can go back and review the things I said a little bit more easily. Now, importantly, the fact that you wrote is a, is a very good sign. Because there are a lot of people who do poorly on these tests and they don't contact me until literally after the semester is over, at which point it's too late. But fortunately, there is time to try to help right now. Now, there are a couple of questions you're likely to ask. I'm going to go through several of those and, and several of the associated points with them. Um, yes, I understand that many of you feel like you did much better on the other, on the other assignments than on the test. And I appreciate that, but there's a big difference. Now, most of the other assignments that we have are not time constrained. So you have plenty of time to stop, think about it, you know, work out the problem, and you can even work with your friends on a lot of those problems, as you know. The test is obviously a very different boat, that you're sitting there, you have your 50 minutes in class, and here's all these questions, you have to get through them. It's a different beast. So it's not uncommon at all that people have, you know, straight A's on their weekly problem sets and practice problems and things like that, but then on the test end up not performing as well. So I hope you understand that. Yeah, several people say that they feel the test is actually much harder. In fact, that's not really the case, and I can show you why. The reason is, when I'm making the problems, I actually make a suite of problems all at once. And I literally just randomly draw a few of them and use them for the problem sets, and another set of them that I then use for the test. So really, they are from a random draw from the same pool of questions. So although there may be some individual questions on the test that were harder than some individual tests, the questions that were on the problem sets, really, on average, the difficulty of the test doesn't actually differ on average from the difficulty of the individual problem sets. Yeah, I understand. A lot of people feel that, that their performance on the test does not reflect their true understanding. That, I mean, I can't argue that's wrong. That may very well be true because, again, it may, it may in some way reflect, you know, how you perform under pressure. It may, affect, it may reflect how you felt that particular day. You know, testing is always an imperfect tool, but it's the tool we have available. Ideally, in a, in a perfect world, we'd sit there and have a 40-minute a interview with each individual student going back and forth and, and having them explain the material to the professor. But obviously, that's not practical, especially for an introductory level class with, you know, many hundreds of students. So I apologize for that, and I understand your frustration with it, but it, it's the tool that we have available. Ah, this is the question everybody always asks. Is there a way I can still get a good grade in the, in the, te in the class? Well, I mean, you can do the math just as, as easily as I can. You have in the class handouts, you have the distribution of how much every test is worth, how much every other assessment is worth. You know, just plug in the numbers yourself and, and see. Now, the one thing I would advise, though, is to plug in realistic numbers. What some people do is they'll go in there and they'll put 100 for every single remaining assessment from here through the end of the class. Now, if you didn't do great on the test, there's a decent chance you're not going to get straight hundreds from here on out through the end of the semester. Even if you put in a lot more effort, it's probably not going to be perfect. In fact, I've never had anybody in this class get straight hundreds all the way through. So that, you know, this would be a first time among thousands of students if that were to happen. So I'd try to put in more realistic grades in there, and you're trying to see what your likelihood is of getting a good grade in the class. Oh, yeah. This question always comes up. I appreciate that, you know, maybe you had a special circumstance, maybe you weren't feeling well the particular day that you took the test, but rather than, you know, staying home and, and trying to do the makeup, you said, well, I'm going to show up and take it anyway. I mean, I appreciate that, and I think that was good of you to do that, but I can't accommodate things like that. I can't accommodate things that were happening in your personal life. That just would not be fair to other students. I can't give any sort of extra credit. I can't drop or adjust a particular grade no matter what, it's, it's not fair to the other students in the class when I said on day one, this is how much every test is going to be worth for them, and then not to apply that for you. 
even if your particular situation was actually unusual on the day of that test for whatever reason. And I fully sympathize. I mean, obviously, I was in college once, too. I certainly took my fair share of tests while not feeling well, and I'm sure I'm positive that that, on some occasions, affected my performance on those tests. In fact, even when I was in college, I had a very close friend pass away the day before I had a, a midterm in developmental psych. I didn't do well on that test. I didn't do horribly, but I certainly didn't get an A on that test, and I'm sure that impacted it. But, I mean, again, the professor couldn't do anything for me, and, and similarly, I, I just can't do that. Now, again, I don't mean to sound unsympathetic. I really appreciate that, that many of you probably did have special circumstances. I just can't be unfair to the other students in the class. Yes, even if you're right at a grade boundary, I can't. I can't just say, well, let's just push this person over, because that literally wouldn't be fair. Now, let me give you an example. From my 2012 Genetics and Evolution class, I went through and counted literally more than 25%. So literally more than a quarter of the class was within one point of a grade boundary. So, you know, that could have been, it could have been a really good grade boundary, like the A minus to A. It could have been one of those critical ones, like the C plus to B minus. But literally more than a quarter class was at one of those grade boundaries. Again, I, I can't just push all those people up. And sure, you could say, well, why don't you just push them all up? But then what about the people the next point over? That would probably be another 20% of the class. It, it's really not fair. So I really have to leave things numerically just as they are. And I apologize for that. Well, that's a very, very good question. How How is it you might be able to do better? I mean, unfortunately, everybody is uh, individual in how they study and how they do things. So I can't offer you know, blanket advice, and I'm certainly no expert. Before I actually give you my tips, let me refer you to something else. Uh, every university has one of these, this sort of academic resource center, and this is the one for Duke. They certainly can advise you better on how to study, so I would certainly would advise you to look at those um, in, in trying to figure out good strategies. Because again, a lot of this, it tends to be very individual, so it's not something that an across-the-board solution is easy for. But I will tell you, this is based on what I've heard from others. This is the kinds of things that people from this class have said it helped them. Number one is obviously to come to class regularly and prepared. You know, watch the videos you're supposed to watch, do the readings you're supposed to do, do the, the assessments you're supposed to do. That's, you know, probably the single biggest factor you can do. That if you try to catch up, you know, shortly before the test, even a week before the test, trying to catch up never works as well as following along the entire time. A big thing for really understanding the material, and this is something actually I found myself in actually developing these lectures, is trying to explain the material to someone who doesn't already understand it. Basically, go through the lecture slides and give the lecture yourself. And don't fake it. Don't just put in a bunch of words and say, yeah, 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 I know what this is. But really present this as though you're doing it to somebody who doesn't already understand it, or preferably actually do it to somebody who doesn't already understand it. Give it to your friend. Give it to a parent or a sibling or something like that. But give the lecture yourself. You will find, while you're giving the lecture, areas that you think you understand, but then when you're trying to enunciate it all, you'll find that, wait, I don't really understand how this connects to that. And you know, if you're honest with yourself as you're doing, you'll really see a lot of those kinds of things. That's probably the single biggest thing I would advise right there uh, after coming to class regularly and prepared, which obviously you can't do number two if you haven't done number one. Um, just more practically speaking, do the problems by yourself first and then confer with others. A lot of people try to do the problem set things in a group. And when you do it in a group, it's really easy when person X just tells you off the bat, oh, I think it's B and this is Y. And you say, oh, yeah, I see. That's why it's B. But really try it completely on your own first and then go back and confer with others and see then if you got the same answers as them. And, and if you didn't get it, argue with them because there are many times that I've, I've heard of people in class being convinced by their friends to end up going with what ends up being a wrong answer. <laughs> And last but not least, when you don't understand a topic completely, even if you sort of get it, you know, if you don't understand it completely, really ask questions in class. That's what class is for. So really ask questions there. The other thing is make an appointment with your TA. They are assigned to help you. That is part of their job. And if you have some problem where the TA refuses to schedule an appointment with you, let me know and I will get on them about that. Well, that's the advice I have to give. Um, this is just sort of the 10 minute version of it. Was it helpful at all? Okay, well, I'll take that. That's probably the best we can do. Let me know if I can help anymore. Shoot me an email if there is something beyond the scope of these things, and please tell me what it is beyond the scope of this that you'd want to discuss further. Or better yet, just come talk to me in class.
Thanks a lot. Take care.